Hey guys, D Mike here from another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're back at it with some more Legend of Zelda. Hopefully you guys are ready for this. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Kind of chose this on a bit of a whim, but also kind of planned. And you're thinking to yourself, whoa, what are you talking about? That makes zero sense. Well, you're right. I kind of felt like playing another Zelda game, and I wanted something that would kind of take a little bit longer. I know that the kind of MO of Super Nintendo Sundays is meant to be kind of more lighthearted, simple, quick, which is fine. But I wanted something that we could kind of sink our teeth into a little bit. So first things first, we're gonna grab a piece of heart, you betcha. We're in the Lost Woods. We're gonna avoid this guy, he looks like trouble. I like his clothes, though. Okay. So you might be familiar with the Lost Woods. That is a pretty... common set piece in The Legend of Zelda. It's in a few different games, but first off, we're gonna collect this mushroom. This mushroom smells like sweet, rotten fruit. You can give this to anybody who wants it. Anybody. The Legend of Zelda encourages you to give your big mushroom to anybody. Especially if it's purple. So we're moving on. We're actually supposed to be heading to... the eastern part of the map. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're actually going to go to a location that has one of my favorite songs in all of Zelda history. You betcha. And here we are. I'm just going to be quiet for a moment and let you enjoy this. Enjoyment over. So this is Kakariko Village. And here are bombs. So bombs work exactly as you would expect. You put them down, they go kapow. You can blow some stuff up. You just gotta be careful. Makes me think of recently, which by the time this goes up, I'm not sure when exactly it will be, but not too long ago was the 4th of July here in the US and A, Independence Day. And a lot of people like to use what be, could be considered bombs or fireworks. And in the process, they like to scare any and all small creatures who are around. I do kind of feel bad for people not being as respectful and sensitive to pets. Because they don't get a choice, unfortunately. And it's pretty noisy for those little people. Alright, that's the map. Which, as you can tell, is looking spectacular. If you've ever played A Link to the Past, you would know that the map does not normally look like this. This is a very crisp and clear map. Normally it looks like... Garbage. Oops, I forget how to pull up the items. We're gonna use our bombs right away. You can actually blow up this little shack right here. Boop. Head right inside. For some reason, it doesn't change anything with the music, but you can get some bombs, you can get some arrows. Just a nice little refill station if you're interested. Okay. There's a fairy if you are down on your luck and you need some health. So we're gonna do a little exploring of Kakariko or Kakariko or Kakariko if you are into saying things incorrectly. This salesman here looks like he might offer us something wonderful, in which case it is the bottle. You can get your first one here for 100 rupees, and it's a little meta. I don't know if this is something that they put into the game in the future as like a callback to this, like a joke, but that magic bottle will be coming in handy later. But first, we're gonna go into uh, someone's garage, and we're gonna steal their savings. Because why not? Not gonna bother talking to anybody. It's actually probably more friendly if you don't 
speak to them when you're stealing all of their belongings. First, we have a chest. It's kind of fun playing through this game. Vanilla, that's what people call it when you don't do anything to it. When you just like it the good old way it came. The way that the... Uh... The way that the goddess is intended, so... But we have a little bit of a block pushing puzzle here. Let's see how we do this. I think I've already screwed it up. It appears to be. Let's see. Yes. Let's go back and reset. Okay. So we'll try that again. Maybe this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. Huh? Okay. Guys, I think, I think we're making it. Boom. All right. So that is all four chests. We do love some nice big chests. This is great. Each of these has 20 rupees in it for a total of 80. Boom. Very nice. Okay. We are doing so well right now. We might have time to... to do a dungeon today, potentially. If not, then this is just gonna be a little bit of build-up. Don't you love build-up, everybody? You gotta be kinda careful in Kakariko Village, because apparently, D-Mike here is a wanted customer for some reason, and they will, uh... They will send the fuzz after you. Coming in here, you can go and visit this person's back door, as you do. And nabbed yourself two bottles already. That is incredible. We are hitting the bottle hard in this Let's Play. Okay, so I think that if we go in here, we can buy a potion if you want. You can buy bombs, or you can buy yourself some parts. We don't need any of that, but... That's the town shoppy in case you need it. Person in red is a little bit of a machining the gannery, so we will skip that. And we can talk to the locals here if you'd like to. They're all having a drink. So this guy's encouraging us to go and talk to women. And this guy's son enjoyed the flute, so don't interrupt that. Interesting world building, of course. We can talk to Mario. First, he wants to tell us an interesting story. Okay, so there are Zoras in this game. It's another one of the races in Zelda, of course. They are the river people. There are river and ocean Zoras, which I guess are different. I don't know if there's a back entrance to this house. No. Let's see if we can just be sneaky sneaky and go in here. Looks like another bombable wall. Let's blow it up. If there's a bombable wall, you kind of have to do it. It's basically required. There's another chest. Let's see what's in here. Ten arrows. We don't have a bow yet, unfortunately. So we can't really go pew pew pew. It's a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. Okay. So we've almost explored every single house in the village here. But yeah, I could listen to this tune forever. It's one of my favorites in all of Zelda. They just did a really nice job with all the music in this game. And this is just kind of an era where I would say music in general is just really well done. Just kind of seems to be par for the course. Okay, so... Let's see. I think I went in this house. Did I go in this house? I did not. This is a very useful item that we'll be able to get from this sleepy boy. Kind of awkward that we're interrupting his nap, but... He's got a cold. 
So for now, they're gonna let us borrow their net. And there's a creepy painting, I think, of Mario right here. Just kind of hanging out, you know. So that's pretty much everything for now in Kakariko Village, beyond moving the plot. There is, however, some more stuff down here. Hmm. Okay. Let's pop inside this little hut and see what we've got in store. It looks like a book, a house of books. This will be important to th think about later. That might be a, a little bit of an allusion to Link's Awakening for those of you who remember getting books off of bookshelves in a very aggressive way. We will be doing that, of course. Here's a little bit of a mini game. So if you uh, open some chests, you can keep what's inside. You only get to open one though. Let's see what we get. Okay, horrible result. We'll do this one more time. But you have to go out and then right back in. We'll try this one more time. I don't actually know what the end goal is of this besides just gambling. Oh, we have 50 though, so a net return of one. There might be a... There might be a heart piece in there somewhere, but that's probably one of those off-screen things that I will do because that sounds miserable to watch. Here's a very large person. Oh, he's quarreling with his brother. I hate it when I quarrel with my siblings. Always getting under my skin, always being born before me and stuff, ugh. Why don't you go talk to him, all right? If you're having trouble with your family, sometimes you just gotta go and, and talk to him. Okay, so here's a little bit of a maze. We have 15 seconds to get to the other side. Loser's a rotten egg. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm gonna do it. This would probably be easier if I had some sort of uh, piece of clothing. That would allow me to move quickly. Ooh. You're not qualified. Why don't you try again, scrub? We will try again. Let's go ahead and reset. I feel like if I wouldn't have gone stuck on the geometry, I wish I would have seen the sign. Annoyingly, though, we have to go back through these... These bros who just can't get their act together. They just can't figure it out. Okay, here we go. So we'll try that again. I think we can make it this time. Oops. We were four seconds too short last time, so we gotta really book it. Not get stuck on any of the plants, which I've already done a couple times. Great. All right, was that good enough? 17 seconds, ugh. All right, one more try. I think we can make it. Probably not taking the most efficient route anyway. Could probably have made a little bit of a turn at the sign itself. So let's do it. Okay. So let's go this way this time. Let's take another route. Boom, shortcut. And our reward is a piece of heart. If I could, <laughs> excuse me, sir, excuse, ooh. excuse me. That was a little, uh, a little frustrating just trying to grab that. He didn't want me to take it. Okay, so far, so good. We're feeling pretty awesome right now. We've got a lot of collectibles in this episode as we wander around. And we still get plenty of Kakariko Village music to serenade us as we return to the village. Okay. So you can go wherever you want. There's no real, like, right and wrong way in this game. I mean, if you want to make progress, you know, eventually you're going to have to visit this guy and other places like that, but... There's no real right and wrong way to play this. And what's kind of nice about this game in particular as an open world Zelda game is you can do the game as, in, as it is intended. Like you can play it 100% linear or you can kind of 
do things a little bit your own way, which I think that they did a really nice job in expanding on the pseudo sequel with a link between worlds, which is really nice. So we did have an X on our map for this house here. So it seems like the wizard has begun collecting victims like Pokemon cards. Interesting. So we learned about the Hylians and the Master Sword. And somehow it's sleeping deep in the forest. I don't know how that's possible, but uh, we need to go find the Elder. I actually happen to know where he is. Because I'm a wizard myself. Okay. So we're actually going to make our way back the way that we came. We're going to return to the sanctuary. That's where we were last time. It says sanctuary, but it kind of looks like a cemetery to me. So we're just going to keep walking on past, walking on past. Okay, so we're almost to where we're going. We collected that fungus among us in the forest. We're going to do something with that really quickly before we make our way to the first dungeon. I think we're on the right path, maybe? Actually, hold on a second. I think I went too far. Whoa. Fellas. Let's, uh, let's take it easy here. I went south and I should have gone north. My bad. But if you come here, we can meet up with, uh, an NPC who is going to help us out a little bit. This is Syrup. So Syrup would like to have our big mushroom, and she is more than welcome to have it, of course. Okay, so you don't really have to go too far. You can just walk back a screen, and that should be enough time for her to have given you something wonderful. I think it may be inside. Wait. Yes. So doing so will get you some magic powder. This is why we grow out our pinky nails. All right, so we have basically all we're... Oh, geez. A little sneak attack. All we're basically going to need before we head to the first dungeon. Hmm. So that's pretty good. We need to... Go back to where we, to whence we came. So the woman we met in the village is actually the elder's wife. She was unaware of the location of her husband. Got to keep a better lock on him, lady. Come on, what are you doing? Just letting him do whatever he wants? That's crazy. So you can go and have her grandson in the village point you in the right direction of where he is if you if you need it. But we are going to dispatch these enemies first and then I'm going to just show you. So if you pull up your map. Alright, so we're headed out to kind of that right area. I mean, I we're kind of backtracking a little bit, but the, and I can't point to it, but if you look where the castle is, that's kind of like the big, the big square in the middle. That's where, uh, if you go directly to the right of that, that's the eastern part of the map. It's where the eastern palace is. That's where we're going to be headed. Not really doing this in a very well-paced manner, but I'm trying to rely on the old memory banks. And that's not always the best. Things are getting a little rusty. We might need a refresh. But yeah, you can head straight there once you... Finish up the sanctuary. You don't have to do any of the things I just did if you don't want to. Not required. Let's check the map one more time. Okay. So instead of heading north this time to get the powder, you're going to want to head south. Dodge the soldiers. They are very aggressive. Always trying to cause trouble. I believe this is the Link to the Past iteration of the Octorok. 
one hit kills around for her buddy. Oh yeah. I'm gonna keep checking this because I am very afraid of getting lost. And I am very prone to do so. My sense of direction is on a scale of one to horrible. It is the top of the block. Absolutely, no kidding. All right, so once again, <laughs> It's an adventure game, and you're on an, an extra adventure with d -Mike Plays. I don't know if there's anything in here yet. There's a fairy fountain if you need it. Okay, we have made it. This is the Eastern Palace area. You can't really do a ton here, unfortunately. You can get 20 rupees off an Octorok. That's awesome. We're gonna need a lot of monies before too long. There's Armo statues, 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 which will always be coming in hot. And wouldn't you know it, we don't need no help. We can find the old man right here hiding out in the man cave. Hello, sir. This is the village elder. He's one of the seven wise men. Where are the wise women? Hmm. Come on, game, get with it. So, he is aware that we need the Master Sword, but in order to get them, we need three pendants. Do I really want to find it? Oh yeah, of course. So we have to get the Pendant of Courage from the East Palace. And if we do, he'll give us a special treat in his basement. But first, we need to blow up his back door. Oh yeah, let's do it. Oops, probably should wait before explosives go off. You can get a ton of money from here, more bombs. Another tutorial on bombs that you already know how to use. Very cool. Yes. And now we can traipse around until we can get to the palace entrance itself. I don't know if the Armos can run up the stairs. I feel like they probably can or or at least able to get really close, and they're pretty quick, so you gotta be careful here. Put a bomb down and see if I can get them to blow up. Okay, nice. Alright, don't know if I needed to do that. That might have been a waste of a bomb. We don't have a ton of those. I'll have to be a little bit more carefuler with our resources. We're just gonna keep exploring around. Thankfully, we can stab things going up the stairs. And this is where we will stop. This is the Eastern Palace where we will find the first of three pendants after we do the dungeon. So thanks for watching everybody, I've been D-Mike. This has been The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past on Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll catch you later. Bye!